Hello, my friends, and welcome back. So people oftentimes make similar mistakes on the science test. So in this video here, I'm going to go over 10 very common mistakes that people make when they are taking the science test. Welcome to Purely Persistent, I'm Michelle. Now, if you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy that you're here. Make sure you click that subscribe button so that you can get all my videos to really help you reach your goal of the high set or GED. Now, let's get started. So I would say one of the most important things when you're taking the test is the scientific method. And people sometimes forget the scientific method or they don't study it. So you really want to make sure you have a very thorough understanding of the scientific method and that will really help you when you are taking your test. So understand what everything is. For instance, hypothesis, that is going to be an educated guess. If you don't know the scientific method, you are likely to miss quite a few questions. Comment down below if you'd actually like me to create an entire video on the scientific method. So the science test is actually a reading test. However, graphs, charts, visuals will be implemented quite a bit. And so I oftentimes see people misreading those charts and graphs. So really take some time before you even look at what's going on in the graph, figure out what the graph is about. So read the title, read the x-axis, the y-axis, the little guide on the side telling you what the different colors and symbols are. Let's take a closer look at this one. So it says vitamin C experiment. These are simply the test results, right? And if you look on the left, it says drops needed to turn clear. So it, maybe it's some sort of liquid, something like that. And we have here zero, one, two, three drops. And then down on the bottom, it says trial one, trial two, and trial three. And we've got green, yellow, and red. Looks like the green is always going to be at two drops and the yellow is always at one drop. But notice how the red goes from two to one back to two. So I always like to do that. Take just a minute and really figure out what's going on in the graph. And then when it comes time for me to answer the questions, I'm much better prepared. Not knowing science facts. So you're going to encounter a variety of questions that you simply cannot answer by looking at the charts, by doing the readings. There's some things that you're either going to know or you're not going to know. So that's why I recommend just practicing, really trying to learn as much science as you can so that when it comes time to answer those particular questions, you're better able to answer. Now my friend Parker from Test Prep Champions is going to join us and tell you a few more common mistakes on the science test. How would you like to have two shortcuts for getting temperature questions right faster? Well, that's what I'm going to give you here. So the first one would be if you have to convert from degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit, all you have to do is take the temperature in degrees Celsius and multiply that by 1.8, then add 32 and you've got your answer. Now to go the other way, to go from Fahrenheit to Celsius, you just subtract 32 from degrees Fahrenheit, then divide by 1.8. So just to show you how easy this is, if I was given 100 degrees Fahrenheit, all I would do is put that in my calculator and subtract 32, which that's going to give me 68. And I'm going to take that 68 and in my calculator, I'll just divide by 1.8 and the answer is going to be about 37.78 if you round and honestly it's it takes longer to write this all out than it does to just put it in your calculator and get the answer so good luck to you knowing how to read graphs is really important for ged science so the key to reading most graphs is to follow the direction of the line on the graph now some general rules of thumb would be when you see the line going up that means increase and when you see the line going down that shows decrease and a flat line means no change. So on screen we see a graph here and what I want you to note is see how the line is going up here. Well that would tell us that between the period of May and June that there was an increase. Now if we look here we see here the line is going down. So that would tell us that between the period of July 
in June that there is a decrease. Now, what about right here where we see that the line is flat? Is there an increase or a decrease? Well, if you remember from just a couple minutes ago, a flat line actually means no change. So we would know that the monthly earnings between April and May stayed the same. It's important to know how to beat mean, median, mode, and range questions. So the mean simply means the average. The median is the middle number in a set of numbers once you've put the numbers in order from smallest to largest. Now the mode is the most occurring number in the data set. So you'd simply find which number shows up the most times. And the range is simply subtracting the smallest number from the biggest number. Thank you so much, Parker. Definitely make sure that you check out Parker's video about common math mistakes that people make on the GED and the high set. Calculation errors. Now, people oftentimes say, oh, it's a science test. I don't have to do math, right? It's not the math test. Well, my friends, math and science, they go hand in hand. You can't do one without the other. And so you're going to see math on the test just as Parker alluded to. So really make sure that you're doing your math correctly, right? Two plus three is not six. And so if you make little tiny errors in the math, that can definitely skew the results, right? We certainly don't want scientists making calculation errors as they're doing complex science problems that are maybe developing a medicine or something like that. Not reading the questions properly. So really pay close attention to what they're asking for. Watch for those key words like not, never, always, all. Those are really going to be clues to help you make sure that you answer the question correctly, right? And that's not just a science tip, right? That's a tip for all the tests that you're taking. Really know what they are looking for. Next, taking too long. Friends, this is a time test, right? So you want to make sure that you're using your time very wisely. Don't spend too much time on one question and then find yourself running out of time. Reading speed is also an issue. So maybe you are running out of time because you're reading too slowly. And if that's the case, then you need to work on becoming a faster reader. And I have an entire video on how to become a faster reader, which coincides with the science test. So make sure you check that video out. Careless errors. We all do them, right? We all have careless errors. We meant to mark C and we actually marked A, right? So really just take a second after each question and make sure that you're answering the correct answer. If you have extra time at the end of your test, go back through and check those answers. Make sure that you did not have any careless errors. There's nothing worse than a careless error when you knew what the answer was, but you accidentally marked the wrong one. Ugh. And finally, forgetting to believe in yourself. So if you're really nervous and really scared, that's a clue that you are not believing in yourself right? You need to believe that you're going to try your very best. And if you believe in yourself completely, you will be more successful. Okay. So here's a little science tip for you. Now the way the brain works is the core of your brain needs to be met your basic needs followed by your emotions. And then your intellectual part is in the outer portion of your brain. So if you're too focused on being nervous, you're not going to be able to access the smarts of your brain, which is the outer portion of your brain. And therefore you're not going to do as well on the test. So it's okay to feel just a little bit nervous. I mean, that's normal. That's actually a good thing, right? You don't want to be overconfident, but believe in yourself. Okay. You can do this at the end of every single one of my videos. I always tell you, to believe in yourself and you have got to, you've got to believe in yourself because you can do this. Okay. Even if you don't pass the first time, study up some more and try it again. Uh, I have so many resources that can help you check the links down below, but do believe in yourself because nobody else is going to do it for you, right? You've got to believe in yourself. I believe in you. 
but that's not as important as you believing in yourself. So my friends, have a beautiful day. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you check out Parker's math video and I will catch you in the next video. Peace friends.